Thank you. It's my great honor to be invited by the Economic uh, Policy Institute and also uh, Workers' Rights Consortium. And um, I'm very um, happy to share the lives of the Boxcon workers with you because um, yeah, everyone are uh, consumers of electro electronic products and we can never accept that our beloved products are produced from a shop. Yes, yeah, so uh, SACOM was founded in 2005 and from our very long name, Students and Scholars Against Corporate Misbehavior, you can imagine that yeah, we are comprised of students and teachers from universities in Hong Kong and uh, our mission is to improve the working conditions at the brand suppliers in mainland China and we uh, try to achieve the aim by doing investigations and campaigning work. So in the past three years, we have investigated a number of brands, manufacturers, um, including Foxconn, Plastitronics, uh, Wintech, etc. Et but we put most of our efforts on Foxconn in the past two years, directly because of the spate of suicides in the factory. Foxconn is the world's largest IT manufacturer, and it was a Taiwanese-owned company. It was founded in 1974, and it operates its first factory in China in 1988. And since then, it, it has been in expanding its workforce, and until now, it is estimated that it has a workforce of 1.2 million, and it has production facilities in China, Brazil, um, Czech Republic, India, Mexico, etc. And it's produce for uh, the IT products for multiple brands like Apple, Nokia, Samsung, Motorola, uh, Microsoft, etc. And in China, it has more than 1 million workers, and it has production facilities in more than 20 cities, so of which Shenzhen, Zhengzhou, and Chengdu are the major suppliers to Apple. And because of the spate of suicide at Foxconn in 2010, there were lots of media attention at the factory. Um, within one year, there were at least 18 suicide attempts in the factory. Yeah, I say at least because we really don't know the real figure. Foxconn will never tell the public uh, yeah, any scandal happened in, in the factory. And yeah, there are 14 workers died and four of them survived. And um, all of them are very young, just between 11 and 25 years old. Yeah, so there are lots of media reports about the crisis at Foxconn. And because of that, Foxconn organized a media tour for the journalist. And on one hand, the CEO Terry Gore apologized that he could not prevent the suicides happened in his factory. But on the other hand, the management attributed the suicides to personal problems only, like uh, the relationship problems with their boyfriends or girlfriends, family problems, financial problems, and loneliness. So the hidden message is that it's not work-related at all. So how Foxconn responded to um, the suicides. It's asked the workers to sign a no suicide pact, promise that they would not commit suicide, and in case they do, then their family members will not be eligible to claim further compensation from the companies. And then it operates care centers, workers' hotline to provide counseling services to the workers. It's installed safety mesh, yeah under the buildings, um, inside and outside uh, Foxconn. And it's also increased the wage, the basic salary, and decreased the overtime work. And it ceased recruiting new workers when um, during the summertime of 2010 and replaced, it, uh, replaced the workforce with student workers. Also, um, since the space of suicides, Foxconn asked all the new workers to go through a psychological test and some questions um, like do you always feel nervous or do you suspect that something that someone is going to kill you 
So they just emerge and that's the workers, they commit suicide because they have mental illness. And prior to the suicide, um, Foxconn only offer a basic salary to the workers at 143 US dollar per month, which is the same as the minimum wage in China. And in the press conference of Foxconn in June 2010, it's announced that it would have a wage increase and the basic salary would be um, 1,900 per month. But in fact, at that time, the local government also raised the minimum, minimum wage, so it's just 9% more than the minimum standard. And in terms of overtime work, in the past, the Foxconn workers, they regularly have overtime um, between 100 and 120 hours per month, while the legal limit is 36 hours per month, so three times more than the legal limit. And then it said it would control the overtime work to not more than 80 hours. Yeah, so it is the picture of the safety net yeah, to save lives of the Foxconn workers. And the picture does not show clearly that um, on every window, there is also installation of the wire net, yeah, in addition to the safety mesh. Yeah, although lots of journalists have questioned what is the real cause of the workers to commit suicide, at that time, the late Apple CEO commented that Foxconn is not a sweatshop. He said um, the factory was pretty nice because there are um, restaurants, internet cafe, movie theaters, and swimming pools, so it is not a sweatshop. But we think that it is very irresponsible to say that because uh, we hope that the companies will do um, impartial and serious investigation to find out the problems at their suppliers, but it's not just this kind of simple statement saying that it is not a sweatshop. So, um, Subcom has done lots of research in a number of Foxconn factory, and Chengdu is one of them. There are two plants or campuses um, of Foxconn in Chengdu. I just simply call it the southern plant and the northern plant. The northern plant is a temporary site which was built within 76 days. And the CEO of Foxconn is so proud of it and regarded it as the Foxconn speed and a few months later, an explosion happened in that factory. And all the work workers at um, Foxconn in Chengdu exclusively <coughs> produce iPad, so the buying relationship between Apple and Foxconn is very clear. And when we look at the um, wage at Foxconn in Chengdu, it's very, very low. Although, on one hand, it um, seems that the workers in Foxconn in Shenzhen, they have a high salary, up to um, 300 US dollar if they have passed their pressure period after 10 months. But most of the workers in the inland province, they still have a median wage. So um, in February 2011, the workers, they can only earn um, 146 US dollar as basic salary. And after one month, Foxconn announced that, oh, we have wage increase, yeah, we provide workers um, 206 US dollar as uh, basic salary, but then it cuts the housing benefits and food allowance of the workers. And so in fact, Foxconn was not really paying more money to the workers. And recently, the new wage level is 246 US dollar. Um, but at the same time, it is also because of the high inflation rates um, in China. And um, the food price has increased by 13% in that city, so it disproportionately affects the working class. So, um, adding up with the overtime premiums, usually the workers, they can earn um, 317 US dollar to four. 100 US dollar per month, and they still have to pay for um, dormitory and food. And um, at the same time, Foxconn decreased the overtime work of the workers. So some workers, they complained that they 
although their so-called wage increase bets their overall salary as almost the same or even less than before. And when we look at the issues of overtime work, um, I've mentioned that um, the working hours at Foxconn is excessive, and sometimes, um, uh, most of the time, the workers, they have 10 hours work shifts per day, and in fact, they stay in the factories for 12 to 14 hours. And they usually have six day work per week, but if there's influx of order, they only have one day off every two weeks. And they also have to attend the work assembly, which is unpaid. Although on the latest Fair Labor Association reports, it's mentioned that uh, Foxconn will decrease the overtime work to 36 hours per month, which will, which means that it will comply with the legal standard. But in fact, Foxconn has promised that they will, uh, they will meet the legal requirements last year, but they haven't do it. So we are really interested to see, yeah, if the new promise of Foxconn could be realized. So it is a typical day of a Foxconn workers getting up before 7 o'clock in the morning and then they queue up for the company bus because the dormitory is far away from the factory. And they have to arrive at the factory earlier to attend the work meeting and swipe work up. That's the time concern is not paid at all. And then the work shifts begin at 8.30 and then ends at 8.00. 30 at night, and then they have to go up for bars and go back to dormitory again. So most of, the, uh, most of the workers, they describe their daily routine as work, eat, and sleep. And many workers, they told us that uh, Foxconn adopted military management, uh, military style management in the factory. But when I went to Chengdu, it really shocked me that there is really so-called military training for all the new workers. So from the pictures, yeah, those are the new workers. They have to line up and form a square and listen to the commands of the supervisors to turn right, left, and ch chant some slogan. And um, some workers, they regard it as a strategy to indoctrinate absolute obedience, um, this kind of culture in the factory. But Foxconn denied their so-called yeah, military training, although we showed the picture to the journalist. And um, at the same time, many workers, they told us the, the life at Foxconn is depressing because they cannot talk to each other, they cannot bring their cell phone on the shop floor, and they just keep repeating the same monotonous tasks for a thousand times a day. And they also say they resemble machines, or sometimes they mock themselves that they are faster than machines. And um, although on one hand, Foxconn decreased the overtime work, it is a good sign. But on the other hand, Foxconn also adjusts the production targets regularly. So. Uh, last month, when I interviewed workers who examined the uh, the service of an iPad, she said the hourly production target was 120 pieces per hour. But one month later, it, it is uh, 130 pieces. So it's keep increasing. And many workers they exam uh, they experience inhumane treatments like. When they made some mistake, they have to write confession letters to admit that, oh, it is my fault, I promise that I will not repeat the same fault again. And um, scolding in the shop floor is almost a norm. And um, one worker in Shenzhen, she told me that uh, she wants to decline overtime work uh, on Saturday, and uh, that's, that is not allowed by her supervisor, and then she was punished because um, she take a live without the permission, which is regarded as so-called work stoppage, and she was punished to load 3,000 boxes per day, yeah, and it's lasted for 10 days. And then another group of workers, they produced iPhones in Zhengzhou, um, 
on one night, the supervisors yelled at them that, oh, there are so many defective products yeah, from our departments, then all the workers are asked to copy the quotations of the CEO. So these are some of the examples. Yeah, the CEO of Foxconn, he's so proud of his philosophy and wisdom of work, and then he developed something called the Terry Gore's quotation. And um, the picture may not be very clear, on the staircase of the factory, it shows some of his quotations and some of the examples is a hush and thumbs is a good thing. Uh, hungry people have especially clean minds. <laughs> Outside the laboratory, there's no high technology, only execution of discipline. So the workers have to copy the quotations for two hours as kind of punishment. And um, some workers, they describe that now the frontline management, they are more civil. They no longer scold us with our language, but yeah, the words are still insulting. Yeah, like, yeah, not just insult the workers, but their whole families. Um, like, yeah, the pigs can only give birth to the brainless. And yeah, if you're smart, you can find currently work in the office, but because you're a DAO, you're stupid, so you have to work on production lines, and so you have to do your job well. And another uh, area that so pays special attention at Foxconn is the occupational health and safety. When the workers we interview, they do not know what kind of chemicals that they are using. They can only tell us the nicknames. They do not know the potential harm of those chemicals and they do not have pre-post training, and they do not have on-post health examination. And um, some workers who in met, they polish the iPad case, they um, regularly inhale the aluminum, aluminum dust. Yeah, that could be poisoning. And we document this issue in our reports and send them to Apple and Foxconn. And um, Foxconn responded to the journalist regarding the occupational health and safety problems <coughs> two weeks later. And on their statements, they say, yeah, we have no problems with occupational health and safety. We strictly comply with all the local laws. But two days later, there was an explosion happened at Chengdu factory, which we investigated, which killed four workers and injured 18. And yeah, and Foxconn just um, just said uh, Sarcom capitalized from the tragedy when we point out um, these issues have been ongoing in the batteries for months, but they didn't take care of the seriousness of the problems. So um, this is the iPad batteries. Foxconn factory in Chengdu, yeah, although it is still under con construction, but still workers there are already working in this kind of environment. Um, the road is really rough, and in the rainy days, it's terrible, and the construction materials pile up, yeah, just <coughs> on the roadside. And yeah, in the factory buildings, maybe the first, second floor has been furnished, so the workers have been already keep working in this kind of environment while the third, fourth floor are still going on construction. Um, yeah, so it can be also very dangerous for the workers as well. But yeah, we, we know that this kind of issues has been fixed after one year, but we're really surprised that the iPad and iPhones are produced under this kind of conditions. And we also aware that Foxconn hire lots of student workers. The main um, rationale to do so because the student workers they are kind of flexible workers because in the electronics industry it is seasonal. So when there is influx of order, then the factory they needs lots of temporary workers. So student workers is an answer for them. And many workers who interview, they study journalism, pharmacy, um, tourism, which is not related to the work of Foxconn at all, but they end up um, working as de facto workers in the factory. And um, according to law, 
the student workers, they should not work on overtime shifts and night shifts, but um, all the student workers, they experience the same as the regular workers. And um, there's the union at Foxconn, um, they're holding rally, um, uh, um, anti-suicide rally at Foxconn two years ago, and they hold up big uh, poster saying that I love Terry Guo, the CEO of the factory. <laughs> um, there are many other workers they wear I love Foxconn t-shirt. Um, so yeah, from our perspective, the union at Foxconn, they mainly defend the, the interest and the image of Foxconn instead of us striving for the interest of the workers. And it is also dominated by the management. So um, one of our key demands is to reform the union, which I will talk about it later. Yeah, so above are uh, the basic findings that we found at Foxconn and is really, really alarming. And I would like to share a story from a survivor of a suicide attempt to you. Her name is Tian Yu. She was 17 years old when she worked at Foxconn. It was her first job. And as a new worker, she was always berated by the management for being slow or being not efficient enough. And after one month, she should claim her salary, but because of the mismanagement of Foxconn, she could not do that. And uh, she walked through one the campus to another campus, and yeah, walked through buildings to buildings, but no one could help her. So when she go back to the dormitory, it was a very isolating environment. She did not have friend in the dormitory. She was so angry, and no one could help her. Then she jumped from the dormitory, and she survived. That her lower body uh, is paralyzed. And her father also exclaimed that yeah, there's a close relationship between the uh, military-style management at the factory and the suicide. And um, in fact, Foxconn uh, paid some compensation to the victim. That's mm -hmm. the, the condition is she should not talk about the case in the public. So in the past year, she is very reluctant to talk about her case in the public. Yeah, and Foxconn produced for Apple and other well-known IT brands. And, and most of the time, the workers, they told us, um, they observed the inspector from the clients. So um, the brand names companies, they know well about the working conditions in the battery, but all they concern is um, the quality of the products and the productivities, but not workers' rights. And it's also very hypocritical that, um, on one hand, the brand names companies, they have their own code of conduct, but they do not really um, strictly enforce those standards. And when there are some scandal at their suppliers, then they will blame. Yeah, it is the problems at their suppliers, not their problems. Um, and thirdly, Apple and other brand names companies, they have blind shares because when they place order at Foxconn, the unit price is very low. It's in, impossible or it's not really encouraging um, the batteries to pay the decent wage for the workers and to strictly comply with the safety standard and um, and the limits of the overtime work. So I supply as a market research firm which has been tracing um, the production cost of Apple products and from this research it suggested that the production costs range from um, less than seven US dollar to 10 US dollar yeah, for producing iPad and iPhone. So the labor cost is very insignificant. So it's just like one, two percent of the selling price of Apple products. And when we look at the profit margin, Bloomberg did some research on that. The profit margin of Apple keep rising yeah, up to 30%. But when we look at Foxconn, this man, uh, the manufacturer, 
the profit margin is only 1.5%. So Apple definitely has the capacity to increase the unit price yeah, to improve the working conditions at its suppliers. And recently, Apple has joined the Ballet Association and um, the reports by FLA documented some of the um, rights violations which has been um, repeatedly mentioned by NGOs and, and media, like underpayment, excessive time, negligence in work safety, and um, company controlled union. But it's downplays some issues like the harsh management methodology. Actually, on one of the appendix of the FLA reports, it's mentioned that over 61% of Foxconn workers, they regularly experienced uh, work pressure. That's on the text of the FLA report. It does not really mention it. And Foxconn is notorious for its harsh management methodology. So we are very disappointed that this issue is not being highlighted. And um, the use of student workers, although it is also mentioned in the reports, but it does not mention the elements of forced internship, yet we, we can also regard it as a form of forced labor. Because some students, if they do not work in a factory as intern, they may have some punishments in, imposed by the schools, like um, they need to drop off or they cannot receive their graduate certificates. And um, another point we're disappointed is through that FLA report, it does not mention the role of Foxconn. Oh, sorry, does not mention the role of Apple. Yeah, we regard it as one of the root cause yeah, because of the unethical buying practice of Apple. So it creates the rampant violations at Foxconn that it is not adequately addressed. And lastly, um, we are not that uh, optimistic that the FLA can enforce all its recommendation because at the end of the day, yeah, it's on the hands of Apple and without the continuous pressure from the public and from the consumers, I doubt Apple will strictly follow their recommendations. Yes, yeah, so yeah, to sum up, Sacom has several demands to Foxconn and Apple. Firstly, we hope that it will reform the management methodology and secondly, provide a living wage for the workers so that they do not have to toy on the production lines yeah, for hours. And um, we hope that the use of student workers would be abolished. And then um, on work safety, Foxconn and Apple should work with experts to fix the problems. And also, although there's code of conduct of Apple, but if there's any violations of the code, there's no consequence on Apple at all. So we hope that Apple can provide remedies for the workers in case there is um, gross violation happened at their suppliers. And yeah, we're very disappointed that whenever this explosion mass poisoning, there's no apology or public account from Apple. And lastly, we hope that uh, there can be a genuine trade union at Foxconn. Yeah, we think that this part is the most important because sometimes the media, they can investigate the um, problems at Foxconn and just like us can do so as well, but there are thousands, of, there are million workers yeah, at Foxconn and we cannot monitor the daily violations of labor rights in factory. So the workers, they should have the right to speak about the problems themselves. Um, we hope for the best that yeah, there can be genuine trade union through democratic elections at Foxconn because the trade union law inside mainland China also require that the union should be go uh, should be produced through elections. Yeah, so um, yeah, thank you so much for your patience. And yeah, the last message I would like to say is yeah, all the um, corporations they only aim to maximize their profits and minimize their responsibilities, so they place order at their suppliers instead of having their own batteries. So. Um, with that pressure from the public, there's no incentive for the companies to improve the working standards at their suppliers. 
So um, it's very important to have your presence here to spread the message around. And yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, for your time.